140 days since our last extra. We're back. Round one of the 2021 FIM Extra World Championship is the second staging of Extra Andorra La Bella. We were due to visit in early 2020 until the pandemic forced the premature conclusion of the calendar. We lost last winter altogether as well. But we squeezed in the 2021 season in a month that could easily have honed the start of the 2022 season in normal circumstances. The shortest calendar in history, two extras in three weeks. The world title will be decided in a fortnight at Extra Barcelona. Well, they say absence only makes the heart grow fonder. And after 20 months, we're delighted to return to action. We've got over one and a half thousand fans joining us here at the Polisportio d'Andorra. They uh, were here for the first time in 2019 for the season finale. Now we're back for the 2021 season opener. The shortest calendar in history, as we've said, we've beaten the pandemic to squeeze in two trials in three weeks. No room for error for our nine competing riders. Seven of the top eight from the 2020 campaign make their return tonight, including the three medalists from our last season, Tony Bo, Adam Ragger and Gironi Fajardo. Four of their fellow countrymen, the sports young guns, join them in the field. And two non-Spaniards complete the lineup. No Benoit Bincaz, who struggled throughout this year with injury and fitness. Matteo Grattarola of Italy, after the best summer of his career, steps in to replace him. And Toby Martin of Great Britain is the wildcard. Welcome to Extra, the feet up indoor show of skill and balance, where the riders must tackle obstacles within a time limit and whilst accruing as few penalty marks as possible. We'll have an FIM observer tonight, Jordi Sanchez, who will be putting a mark against each rider any time that they touch any part of the bike other than the tyres on the section. That's known as leaning and for using any part of the body on the section or floor, that's known as footing. We've got a course broken down into zones known as sections, each of which carries a maximum score of five marks. In the case that the rider falls or dismounts, exceeds the boundaries of the section or accrues more than three marks for any reason, a five-point score will be registered against their name. Have a series of laps that will be scored with that same system. The event itself follows a knockout format. Each round is awarded points independently. Round one is the preliminary stage. One uh, lap for nine riders, and the poorest three will be eliminated. The remainder will then move on to the heat stages, round two, where they're split into two groups. The winner of each progresses to the third stage of the grand final, an additional playoff for third position taking place as a precursor to the final. As you can see, we're underway with rider introductions here in Andorra. The first rider presented to the crowd, Toby Martin, 21-year-old uh, from Great Britain, the Trial 2 world champion making only his third appearance in the Extra World Championship. As I said previously, he comes in as the wildcard. This is Mikel Jalabert. He makes his first Extra appearance with Gas Gas after spells with Sherco. And uh, most recently with Vertigo, fifth in the world in 2018 and 2019. It was pretty uh, inexplicably disappointing last season, at which he finished down in eighth. Long gap between the seasons, as we've uh, mentioned previously and a couple of minor changes as far as regulations and so on are concerned, and we'll go through those as the night goes on. These will be the first two riders out onto the sections then in round one tonight here in Andorra. Toby Martin of Great Britain and Mikel Jalabert, one of no less than seven Spaniards who features in a nine-rider field. Three different nationalities represented in total, including Great Britain's Toby Martin and Matteo Grattarola of Italy, who we mentioned previously. Youngest rider in the field at 21 years of age is Gabriel Marseille, making his first appearance at Extral Andorra La Vella. Actually failed to qualify for this event in 2019. He was a permanent rider in the Extra World Championship in 2020. He is again in 2021. We've not got the situation we've had in past seasons of riders trying to qualify for the uh, subsequent stages of competition with there only being two rounds this year. We're uh, moving in towards a situation where we've got two rounds and uh, the eight permanent riders will compete in uh, both of them. So more conventional for those of you who are familiar with uh, traditional X-Trial history, that we had uh, a, a more sizable number of permanent riders than we've had in the new era over the last few seasons. First three riders introduced then, Toby Martin, Mikel Jalabert and Gabriel Marseille. Fourth onto the stage is Jaime Busto, world number three of 2018 and 2019. He was only sixth overall last season, started the season strongly at the opening round, Extra La Réunion, which seems like a world away at this stage now. Uh, two years on, of course. Uh, picked up a podium at Extra La Réunion, Jaime Busto, but largely struggled from there. As you may have worked out already by now, the riders are being 
uh, not only introduced in the order that they will feature on the sections tonight, but we've also got the riders I mentioned previously in the reverse order of where they finished in the last full extra season 2020. So Martin, of course, uh, a wild card this evening, and Matteo Grattarola substitute for Benoit Bincaz. So he will be uh, fourth from last as far as that seeding order is concerned. Next on to the arena floor then, another Spaniard. Four in a row, as we said previously, the four young guns, Gelabé, Marseille, Busto and Jorge Casales, the 26-year-old from Galicia. This is his uh, second season now back with Gas Gas. He finished fifth overall in 2020. Has fond memories of Exile Andorra La Bella, scored his first extra podium here in 2019 uh, after the disqualification of Gironi Fajardo actually got to then stand on the podium for the first time at Extra Barcelona last season. Next on to the arena floor, Matteo Grattarola, the Italian, who's earned qualification to the Extra World Championship, really enjoyed the summer of his life. His first trial GP podiums and a world number four ranking as well. This will be his first extra trial appearance in December 2017, his uh, first full season in eight years. Spoke to Matteo earlier on, and uh, he said he, he fe feels the whole situation is a little bit strange, being out of the extra trial scene for so long, uh, with uh, only 10 previous appearances to his name at the age of 33, coming back as a full-time rider. Not sure he necessarily anticipated the turn of events that we've seen in 2021 fine run has been from Matteo Grattarola in the summer. Ever the acrobat, Jeroni Fajardo is next onto the arena floor. He makes his 100th extra appearance tonight. The 36-year-old made his debut all the way back in 2005. He finished third overall that year. He was third again in 2017 and uh, last season as well. Closest contender, certainly the most uh, consistent rider behind the big two. Be the last two riders introduced here tonight. On now to the top three from the 2020 World Championship. Jerome Fajardo, third position. The next two are the big two themselves. Men who've shared the last 18 World Championships between them may well make it the last 19 World Championships between them by the end of this campaign. The oldest rider in the field, 39 years of age, Adam Raga. He is the most experienced as well. In tonight's lineup, passes Dougie Lampkin in the all time extra appearance records this evening. His 136 extra tonight. Four times a world champion, Adam Ragger, between 2003 and 2006. The man who's won all of the titles since then is the next man to be presented to the crowd. Speaking to Adam earlier on, he was talking in terms of this being among his best chances to unseat Tony from the top of the tree. High pressure scenario with only two rounds this campaign be a big extra in Barcelona in two weeks' time. Don't miss it. If you can be there, make sure you are. Adam Raga, an incredible level of consistency he's had at the top of this sport. He's been in the top three in the world every year from 2002 onwards. Even in this veteran stage of his career, six consecutive silver medals in those last six seasons. He was second in every 2020 round. And he was second in every 2020 round to this man. Listen to a little bit of this from the crowd. Tony Bowe, 14 times and reigning world champion and a home man here in Andorra. He is a resident of Andorra. Celebrated his 35th birthday just three weeks ago and certainly shows no signs of slowing down, does he? Unbeaten in 2020 with five wins, as I said. Again, the favourites claim honours in 2021 for Repsol Honda. He spoke earlier about this being a potential 30th world title, including uh, summer championships, of course, for Tony Bowe as well. Could be a 15th in extra. Little doubt about who the partisan crowd is supporting here tonight. They certainly got behind him at extra Andorra La Villa in 2019, our first visit to the capital of Andorra. And uh, Tony Bowe was very popular on that occasion and uh, delivered for the crowd, came out victorious. Look at the participating riders then here this evening. They will feature uh, from right to left in terms of starting order in the sections. Toby Martin, Mikel Gelabert, Gabriel Marseille, Jaime Busto, Jorge Casales, Matteo Grattarolo, the replacement rider, and the top three from the World Championship in 2020, Jeroni Fajardo, Adam Raga, and Tony Bow. That's your seeding order then. And the first rider out onto the sections will be the only rider who doesn't now go back to the side of the stage to watch their rivals and understand what these sections are all about. And that will be Toby Martin, first rider out. 
mentioned uh, a couple of changes to the regulations for this season. The main one is a refinement of the tie-break rules. Uh, for round one, if two riders or more are equal in this stage, the rider with the disadvantageous first starting position will take the highest ranking. Uh, later on, it changes in round two. It'll be the rider with the better result in round one. And uh, in the consolation final, the final will still go to a tie-break section if required. And in the case of the final, we'll go to as many tie-break sections as we need to get a settled result in terms of uh, the top two in tonight's Extra Andorra La Vella. In the case of uh, a tie after the tie-break section in the consolation final, well, we'll talk about that if we get there. Uh, but we'll be looking at time, and then if we still can't break them, we'll be looking back to the previous round, round two. First rider into the six sections. Riders have six minutes to complete these six. Toby Martin of Great Britain, 21 years of age. Hosting a new minder tonight in uh, Michael Brown. Former rider himself made uh, 22 extra trial appearances. Toby Martin, by contrast, has just two to his name. This will be the biggest step of section one. Yeah. Martin sets himself up nicely. Solid start to the evening for Toby Martin, who's out with a clean in section one. Toby Martin, the least experienced rider in the field, as we said, with just two uh, with just two appearances in the past. In now to section number two. This one's a tougher one. Solid work so far. That's going to be a mark for uh, leading. You can see the bikers stop there on the sum. Makes his way down the other side. Short sections in the early stages. Martin has already got his way through the first two with less than a minute of time used. Time is no longer a time break, so he doesn't need to rush. He can manage the time from here on in. He's got five minutes to complete the remaining four sections. Just a single mark. Scores over the opening two sections. Toby Martin continues on now. Section three. Again, great work in that section from Toby Martin. This looks like being a low-scoring trial tonight. Steeper steps to come over the course of sections four and five. That's going to be a mark for leaning. Quite a clear sound as well from the sub. Metallic sound of metal on metal, of course. Section set largely metallic as well with grip on them. With feet as well, making them treacherous. Biggest leap of this lap so far, and a first failure of round number one in X trial Andorra La Vella, and it's Toby Martin. So, six marks from the four completed sections so far, two sections remaining. Martin will set the bar if there is a tie break. Martin stands to benefit in round one as the first rider out through the sections. Disadvantageous in terms of opening new ground, giving an idea to his rivals about what the lines might be. Best lines, anyway. This is the other big step that I was talking about now for Toby Martin to negotiate. This is going to be tough for all of the riders, I fancy, particularly for Martin, the man with the least experience. Big moment for Toby Martin in the context of his potential qualification. Remember, only six riders will move through. Toby Martin comes straight down. Didn't get enough purchase or enough reach. Two fiascos in succession then for Toby Martin. 11 marks from five. One section still to go in round number one. Three and a half minutes to do it, so it's, they're short sections. And the first two look pretty straightforward in particular. Sixth and final section of round number one for Toby Martin of Great Britain, the 21-year-old. Set to move up to trial GP next summer, really proved himself in the second tier of the sport. He's up against the big guns tonight. Opening X trial and Dora Levy. One and a half thousand strong crowd here in the capital of Andorra, the Principality of Andorra. The first module, and the riders do have to touch all of these modules, so it might look as though they can leap from one end to the other. They will have to touch the uh, two blocks. You can see the stickers there in your picture, stickers indicating to the riders that they are required to drop down onto these squares. So this is a potential risk for leaning, but Martin negotiates it well. Now he's got to drop down the other side and make his way across that cylinder. He may choose to bridge first with the front wheel on the cylinder, and that's exactly what he's done. Back wheel will now come down. There it is. But Martin falls backwards and down he goes. It's three failures in a row. Toby Martin ends round number one on a score of 16 marks. And that's the tally they've got to beat. In extra round, Dora Lavi. It's done to so much promise for Toby Martin. Late on, he's failed three in a row. We'll wait to be seen whether that's enough to move through inside the top six.
So you're getting images from Toby Martin's lap there. Crash in uh, section six, first of all. Falls as well in section four and five. Not particularly frustrated with the section five one. Clearly felt that that was achievable for him. I must admit, uh, sections four and five have the biggest steps in this opening round, and then section six is the more technical of the sections. Which is both two cylinders at the end, slippery material, and, and not a lot of purchase either. Brief delay. I wonder whether there might have been some discussion uh, as to whether there was any damage to the sections and so on. But we are now out onto the arena floor for the second rider. This is Mikel Gelabert, twice an extra podium finisher, of course. His first uh, extra podium and only his third appearance. Uh, an incredible second place at 2018 extra Strasbourg and uh, a third at extra Marseille in 2019. Team name Mikel Gelabert. 16 extra appearances. Two of them have ended in podiums. Tonight's extra land or elevated. 16 of the tally beat. Mikel Gelabert, that's the early target. Section one. Tony Martin was able to clean on this one. In fact, he only dropped one mark in the first half of the lap and he did it in record time as well. Two sections early on. Gelabert up on the back wheel doing what he needs to do to avoid any drop marks for leading. And it's a clean in section one for Mikel Gelabert. There's a polite round of applause from the crowd here in Andorra La Vella. Section two for Gelabay. Sherco and Vertigo rider has been with Gas Gas for a while now, but uh, not in terms of extra, such has been our break. Gelabay working hard here to avoid dropping a mark for leading, and he's done so. It's given us a clean. Toby Martin, remember, took a mark at the very peak, the crest of that section two. So, uh, pound for pound, Gelabert is already a mark ahead of where Toby Martin was at the same stage. Which, of course, means that as he gets through this one, section three, in similar fashion to Martin, i.e. clean, he will beat Toby Martin for more. Mikel Gelabert is up over the main step of the section. Now it's a couple of tricky crests to avoid dropping a mark for leaning, not slip off the face of either of those cubes as well. And Gelabert's done that very well indeed. He is clean through section three. He will beat Toby Martin here tonight, regardless of his efforts in the remaining three sections. Martin failed all three from sections four to six. Can Mikel Gelabert get the better of him? Section four. This is where Toby Martin fails. Trying to bridge up to the main step of this section. It's the highest point of this extra trial so far for Mikel Gelabert. You can see the height that he's got to reach. Mind uh, performing acrobatics as ever. Presses himself in. Oh, he was so close to making that one. And I think he knew it as well. Given the anguished look on his face as he tumbled back to a fiasco. Opportunity missed there for Mikel Gelabert. His first drop marks on the lap, and it's a fight mark score in section four. Onwards and upwards for Gelabert. His first drop marks. Now he moves on to section five. Another section that was failed by Toby Martin first time out. Really the challenge for the first three riders out, of course, is they don't know what kind of scores the top six seeds are going to be able to manage and what they'll need to beat in order to move through to round two, the heat stages. Next trial and or elevate. It's the big step that caught out Martin. Tricky one as well because the section is angled down. It's such a leap then up to the, uh, the main cylinder. It's a curved surface as well. The back tyre as high as possible. Fire explosively straight to the end of section five. That's the target. An ultimate section for Mikel Gelabert. And he's down and out. It's ten marks from five. He's failed the same two as Toby Martin in section four and five. And that single dab for Martin in section two could yet prove costly. Section six. And Gelabert managed this one where Toby Martin failed before. Has he been able to learn sufficient from the TRS man? Martin, the first rider out into the section tonight. Two and a half minutes still to go, so no worries on time. It's super quick sections in round one. They'll get more difficult for the final because four of them are in two directions. So uh, if they've taken only 30 seconds here, they'll only have a minute in the final for each of them. 
Mikel Jelabet. Will he take the same approach now as, as Toby Martin? He must touch that block. Oh, he's balanced it nicely. There was a moment where I thought he was teetering backwards. It's still clean as well. Mikel Jalabert is up. Fight performance in section six from Mikel Jalabert. It's a fourth cleaner black. Ten marks to total. Clean or five for Mikel Jalabert. The gas gas man. Remains to be seen whether that's enough to get him through, but it's enough to beat Toby Martin by six marks, and Mikel Jalabert leads extra Landora La Vella. Ten marks for Mikel Jalabert, 16 for Toby Martin. Next rider to try and beat that 10 mark score will be Gabriel Marseille. Need to avoid failing two sections. As uh, Jalabert has just done before him, of course, if Marseille does fail two sections and ends on 10 marks, the same as Jalabert under new regulations in 2021, it would be Jalabert who has the advantage by virtue of the disadvantageous and first starting position. Action again from Jalabert as he tumbles back in section four. And the same in section five, but section six, the key moment. That's where he's made most of the gap he's got over Toby Martin. Five marks for Martin there in section six. Mikel Jalabert, the first rider to make it through, let alone make it through clean. Third rider out tonight is Gabriel Marseille. Now in his second season as a permanent rider in the X-Trial World Championship. Scored his first podium at X-Trial Budapest last season. Otherwise, the inconsistent. Actually made his debut at X-Trial Budapest as well in 2018. He's been a Montessa regular since. One of the products of this new era of X-Trial, along with the likes of Mikel Jelabet. Riders taking their time in the sections uh, this evening. They've got plenty of it in the sections as well. Six minutes more than sufficient for the two riders who've gone so far in round number one. Gabriel Marseille laying rubber just to give himself maximum grip for an explosive start to section one. No riders have struggled with that initial step, to be honest. It's been too clean so far. So Martin and Mikel Gabriel Marseille then, the third rider through, 21 years of age. Up the first step successfully. Laying rubber, whether it was preparing himself psychologically or whether it was just uh, cleaning the tyres as he wished. It's so far so good. And it is a clean in section one. Gabriel Marseille, so far so good. But it's the same for Martin and Jalabert before him. These next two are critical. I say he needs to keep it clean, frankly. Martin dropped a single mark in section two. Mikel Jalabert was clean over sections two and three. So that's the target for Marseille. Do the same as Jalabert before him. Very good. So far, so good. All on the back wheel, and that's done in real style and with real alacrity. Beautiful from Marseille. Two sections, two cleans. Still five minutes on the clock. Still four sections to go. Jalabert was also clean through this one, section three. Martin as well. Can't afford errors in the extra World Championship in 2021. Knockout format as always. Such a strong lineup. So difficult to predict these days. That'll be a mark for leaning. First crest. And he caught it with the sup. It was the merest of glances, but it was enough. The observer was right on the case. Top notch so far. No marginal calls to make, though, thus uh, far in the X-Trial. So it's a single mark for Gabriel Marseille in section three. So if he's going to beat Mikel Jalabert, he's going to have to get through one of the next two sections. But Jalabert failed. Will it be section four? Will it be section five? Will it be neither? This is better news for Mikel Jalabert than it is for Gabriel Marseille, who at the moment, at the halfway mark in round one, is on the same score that Toby Martin was at the same stage. I'll see you then. Front wheel down into the trough. Now he's got to flick the front wheel up, back wheel where he wants it. Compression like Jalabert before he slides down. Wet himself in and then tries to power up. Receives encouragement from his minder. As I said, wedging that front wheel in. You can see the height of the section from this angle. Gabriel Marseille, crucial moment for him, section four, failed by the two riders before him. And the front wheel has to be caught by Jimenez, his minder. And it's a five-mark score in section four. So it's six from four. Gabriel Marseille, still one more than Jalabert was on at the same stage. Two sections to go. 
10 marks to score to beat for Gabriel Marseille. Of course, there are still six more riders to come, but he'll want to keep things in his own hands as much as possible. Stay ahead of Jalabert. Got a maximum of four marks to play with over the next two. Well, three marks to play with, really, because if he ties with Jalabert, of course, it's Jalabert who has the advantage under this new format for 2021. So far, so good, but the biggest step is still to come. This is the one that's going to make the difference as far as Marseille is concerned. Section six has already been cleaned by Mikel Jalabert, who showed the way. Different approach for Marseille. He's going to take it side on. Is he going to try and... Uh, just force his way up here and use a leg if he needs to, use a dab if he needs to, paddle his way if he needs to. Maximum of three marks to play with, of course. If he scores three here, he'll be on nine with a section to go. And a section that he knows has already been cleaned by Mikel Jalabert. Big moment this for Marseille. Tessa Mann. Ninth extra appearance. Oh dear, gets that badly wrong. Before he even uh, got off the penultimate module. Clatters down quite nastily as well. He's got a moment to capture his breath before the final section. All is not lost just yet, but he will be beaten by Mikel Jalabert. So we have a new order. Mikel Jalabert leads the X trial. Gabriel Marseille into second on 11. Toby Martin third on 16. Another five drop marks for Marseille here, and he would be behind Toby Martin. Riders are allowed a timeout for mechanical failures if they need it. Looks as though Marseille is not happy with the the bars, whether they've been knocked out of shape, whether they're not quite straight after his fall there in section five. It is two fiascos in a row for him, as it was for Mikel Jalabert, but crucially for Marseille, had a single dab in section three, and of course, even if he hadn't had that one, he would have been behind Jalabert in terms of countback. Final section of round one for Gabriel Marseille, who sits on 11 marks so far. 16, the score he's got to beat. He's got to get through this one to beat Toby Martin. Nervous moment here for him. Step up the side of this block, try and avoid dropping a mark for leaning. So any part of the bike other than the tyres touching the section, of course. It's the, the base of the engine plate, but it's always a risk in extra. Gabriel Marci. Less than a minute to go, he's taken his time after the crash, and that's understandable. Up he goes, that's done well. Still clean in section six. Mikel Jalabert was clean before him. Mikel Jalabert, the current leader of this extra, just those two failures in sections four and five against him. Again, bridging to the next cylinder two previous riders have done. Got to be careful not to fall backwards out of the section like Toby Martin did before. Should be home clear now for Gabriel Marseille. Marseille does enough to beat Toby Martin. It's three cleans on the lap, but a drop mark in section three could prove pivotal in the final reckoning. It leaves him a mark behind Mikel Gelabere in what's been a low scoring extra so far, and the biggest names are still to come. The scoring's only going to get tighter and tougher. Mikel Jalabert leads extra Landor La Bella. If any of the remaining riders finish behind him on their lap, that will be enough to see him through to the heat stages. Gabriel Marseille has things more difficult. Toby Martin is five adrift of his nearest rival as things stand. Look back there at Marseille's efforts. Cleans in the opening two sections, single drop mark in section three. Could be one that he comes to Rue. Needed to get through one of sections four or five anyway to beat Mikel Gelabert, he couldn't do so. 11 marks for Gabriel Marseille then, will that be enough? Jaime Busto is next up. Newly signed with Vertigo for 2022 and 23. deal announced in late September. That's going to bring him to four full years with the manufacturer. Good time of late for Vertigo, who uh, recently launched their new Nitro model. They're expanding production facilities in Barcelona as well. That's uh, Mark for leaning there for Jaime Busto on the first step, and that is a surprise. That's the first rider to drop a mark in section one. The other three riders before him have all been clean. That really is going to leave Jaime Busto under pressure to get through sections four and five. The rest of the section, good work from Busto. But I would suggest that's a bit of a nervous start from Jaime Busto. First step of the 2021 season. And Busto takes a mark for leaning. Rider of immense capacity and immense talent. 
was hailed when he first came into the sport as the man who would replace Tony Bow. That's been more in doubt over recent years. His temperament hasn't always worked in his favour. Consistency hasn't often been there right. Section two is clean. Single mark from two sections. Remember, Martin and Marseille were on a single mark at the halfway mark on the lap. Mikel Gelabert was clean after those three completed sections. Section three up next behind him. Fast start to it, as well. still five minutes to go. So time not, not an issue. The rider to have used the most time so far was Marseille, who still had 20 seconds to spare. On the back wheel, coming out of section three, is the damage already done, though, for Jaime Busto, who's got to get through one of the next two sections to be able to beat Marseille, let alone to challenge Mikel Jalabert. Busto under pressure. Big step this one for Jaime Busto. From the Basque Country. Into this season with a great deal more experience on the Vertigo machine than he did at the start of 2020. Of course, 20 months on. Busto is up. Jaime Busto is the first rider to make it to the summit of section four. He's taken a mark for leaning. But if he can avoid any more drop marks in the remainder of section four, he will move above Mikel Gelabert and Gabriel Marseille. Great ride from Jaime Busto that gets his night back on track. Busto with a single drop mark in section four moves on to two. At this stage, Gelabert had five, Marseille and Martin on six apiece. So Busto now will definitely beat Toby Martin in round one. If he were to fail the two remaining sections, though, he would still finish behind Gelabert and Marseille. So it's not, he's not out of the woods just yet, Jaime Busto. This section has been felt by all three riders behind him, section before him, section five. Two to go. Right here would leave him under pressure in section six. On the back wheel, this is going to be quite some leap if Busto's going to manage it. He's going to have a go. And he too is down. That really looks an impossible section. We'll see if that's the way it proves over the rest of round one. One to watch out for because it'll come again in the grand final as well. Seven marks then for Jaime Busto. If he scores three marks here, he will tie with Mikel Gelabert. Gelabert will have the advantage. So he needs two better to guarantee his place in the heat stages round number two. Marks is the target here for Jaime Busto. So far, so good. Needs to avoid dropping a mark here for leaning. This isn't the part of the section that riders have had problems with. Gelabert and Marseille were both clean, remember. Toby Martin fell just before this cylinder. Gusto has been shown the way by Gelabert and Marseille. Bridge with the front wheel. I said that before Martin uh, took the section. That's the, the way the riders are approaching it. Gusto teeters on the edge. Gets the balance. Jaime <laughs> Busto is the first rider to book his place in the heat stages of Extra Landor La Vega 2021. It's a clean in section six. He finishes the lap on seven. He's got three riders behind him in the provisional standings. Gelabert, Marseille, and Martin still in the drop zone. Nervous start for Jaime Busto. Single drop mark in section one. Two cleans in a row. Certainly calm the nerves. But it was all about section four. That was the key performance. Just a single drop mark there. A section that had been failed by the three riders before him. And that's what guarantees him his place in the heat stages. Jaime Busto, first rider to book his position in round two. Clean in section six, cleans in sections two and three, but it was about how many sections Busto was able to get through. Only one fiasco out of the six, and it does look as though keeping those failures to a minimum is what's going to determine riders moving through or not to the heat stages. Three failures for Toby Martin, who's bottom, two apiece for Gelabert and Marseille, second and third respectively, and Jaime Busto, only one failure, is out in front on seven. Jorge Casales is next up. 26 years of age. Hasn't been out of the top six in his last five extras, dating back to the championship's last visit to Andorra in 2019. Placing the heat stages will certainly be the minimum expectation for him. First step, we saw Jaime Busto drop an errant and frankly unnecessary mark. And I say unnecessary because the three riders prior to him had all been clean. Jorge Casales now. Section one, 
Six minutes on the clock. Main step of section one, Casales has got that wrong. He didn't get the reach that he was aiming for, and now he's in a precarious position. He's taken a mark for leading. Left foot goes down as well. Well, I thought the foot came up and went back down again, but I'm sure they'll debate that after. Looks like two marks have been given for Jorge Casales. He might count himself lucky not to have ended up with three there. Have to watch that back at the end. Casales, two marks so far. That's more than anyone has dropped in section one. So after an excellent start in that section for Toby Martin, the last two riders have struggled with it. Casales racing through section two and doing so clean. First clean of the evening for him. Two marks from two sections. He's another one who's going to have to get through either sections four or five. Really, he's been a tough run of late for Jorge Casales. Had a nasty injury in April to his ribs and uh, spleen as well. Caused him to miss over a month of pre-season preparations for the summer. Then got a positive COVID test at the first trial of the of the year. He's left in hotel isolation for two weeks. And later in the season, he uh, withdrew from the Spanish Championship round. Hospitalised after an anxiety attack. A, a drop mark on leaning already. That's going to be another. And can he even get it out of this crevice, Jorge Casales? It could be a first rider to fail in section three. You can see he's dragging his feet. That's three marks now. And for me, that could well prove a failure for Casales. He gets away with it. Three marks for Jorge Casales. A lucky boy as well. That could easily have been a failure in section three. At one stage, it looked as though he was practically paddling his way through. And it could easily have been three in section one as well. And if we were looking at... Uh, three marks more and eight marks after three completed sections for Casales, he'd really be in trouble. Instead, it's five. He's got to get through one of these next two, four or five, to keep himself in contention. Five marks from three sections. Most any of the other riders had dropped was one. Jorge Casales then, hoping to put that difficult summer behind him with a strong X-Trial campaign. Been disappointing so far. Section four. Big reach, but he too becomes a victim of section four. Fourth rider to fail there. Moves on to 10. Same score as Mikel Jalabert. Jalabert would beat him on count back, even if Casales were to be clean in the next two. Nobody has managed to get through section five. And it wouldn't surprise me if we see another failure here for Casales that will drop him behind both Jalabert and Marseille. It's his big step at the end of the section that Casales has struggled with. Ten marks from four sections so far. First failure last time out in section four. Casales trying to get some uh, heat into the back tyre by the looks of it. It's crucial, crucial final step. Crucial because if he cleans it, he's very much in with a chance of beating Marseille. He can't beat Busto now. He's not going to beat Jalabert either. It's about Casales versus Marseille at this stage, and Casales needs a clean. Work on the back wheel, big leap. I really think that could prove impossible in section five. If anyone's going to make it uh, achievable, it's going to be the last two riders out, Raga and Bo. It's a five for Jorge Casales. Back-to-back -back fiascos for him. 15 marks with a section still remaining. If he's not clean here, he will be beaten by Toby Martin as well. As it is, Casales drops into fourth position behind uh, Gabriel Marseille after that failure in section five. Casales in real trouble here, and it's been given as a five. A failure for Jorge Casales. He finishes his lap on 20 marks, and he is bottom of the pile. Toby Martin moves up one position. What a disastrous lap that was for Jorge Gonzalez, and it could have easily been more marks as well. Two dropped in section one, could easily have been three. Three dropped in section three, could easily have been a failure. And then three failures in a row to round out the lap. Section six that have been cleaned by the last three riders consecutively. Gonzalez comes home with a five. And he's bottom of extra Andorra La Villa. What a difference. A couple of years can make. Remember that Casales was super value here in 2019. Made it to the consolation final and was eventually awarded a podium place. Boy, Casales dropping five marks in the first three sections. One was the previous worst. And things only got worse from there. Three consecutive fiascos. He's not uh, a smiley character at the best of times, Jorge Casales. Keeps his emotions large, largely close to his chest. 
but uh, he had a distinct frown by the end of round number one here in Extra Andorra La Vella. I suspect that is the last we'll see of Casales tonight. Standings at present, Jaime Busto 7, Mikel Jolomir 10, Gabriel Marseille 11, Toby Martin 16, and uh, Jorge Casales 20. That will also be enough, that result for Casales to guarantee Mikel Jolomir his place in the heat stages. Busto and Jolomir already through. Marseille, Martin and Casales in the drop zone as Mateo Ratarola now takes the arena floor. But avoid the kind of errors that have crept in for the last couple of big names. Busto and Casales, both very capable performers. Mateo Gratarola, more experienced than them in terms of uh, years on the bike. 33 years of age, but he's made just 10 X trial appearances. Focused generally on the outdoor scene, really reinvigorating those who enjoyed it better. And this season was very much being one of his best. Two drop marks there already. One for leaning on the crest, another for footing. Is he going to get away with a third there at the end of the section? It is two for Matteo Gratarola in section one. Same score as Jorge Casales, so not a good start at all. Section two cleaned by all but Toby Martin. Martin dropped a single mark at the top of this section. Gratarola teetering on the edge of dropping a mark for leaning. But to avoid that sump touching the metal of the section. Slides his way down. Cool and composed in section two. Matteo Gratarola is clean. Two marks from two sections. Great samples on the same table at this same stage. Gabriel Marseille will be rubbing his hands together every time he sees Matteo Grattarola drop a mark. He's the next rider with an opportunity to move up the order. As I said, Grattarola has been great value since joining better. Becoming the manufacturer's number one, really. That's how he's earned his way into the uh, back into the Extra World Championship after such a long absence. It's only his second appearance under the current Extra format of six sections in six minutes. There was a moment there where Gratarola was unbalanced and he decided that it was time to just launch his way to the end of section three rather than risking losing that uh, equilibrium and dropping out. So it's a clean in section three, two cleans in a row, puts him back in front of Casales and he won't be last at least tonight, Matteo Gratarola. Even five failures now would leave him on 17. That would be better than Casales. Section four, Jaime Busto, the only rider to make it through here. Gratarola taking the same approach. I don't think there's too much about it in terms of alternatives. It's all about power. Matteo Gratarola trying to leap to the top of this section. If he can get through this one, he puts himself in a great position to qualify. Same with section five. Well, that looks tougher to crack. It's a single mark for leaning, but that looks like a security mark for me. Gratarola wanted to make sure he got up, and he has got up. Matteo Gratarola moves on to three dropped marks. Matteo Gratarola is through in section four. Only the second rider to pull that off. And his place in the second round tonight looks decidedly more assured than it did before that one, that's for sure. Three marks, only Busto was on a better score at this stage, and even then only by a single. Two sections to go. This looks impossible from what we've seen so far. Five riders who've not even made it halfway up to crossing this cylinder. Gratarola will be the latest to have a go. Not like it's worth rushing, almost three minutes still on the clock. An ultimate section for Matteo Gratarola. Three top six finishes in ten X trials. Looking set to make it four in 11. I think it's more likely that he's going to get through section six to put his place in round two than this one in section five. Gratarola is up. Oh, Matteo Gratarola has done it. Five riders failing section five. Matteo Gratarola books his place in round two and in flying style. A clean in the penultimate section. Gratarola on just three. And if he can avoid a failure in section six, he'll beat Busto as well. He's in trouble though early in section six. It's a clumsy start. Mark for leaning. Don't think the observer had picked that up initially, but he's advised by the referee then. Agree with that one. Drop mark for leaning at the top of the first cylinder. It's a scrappy start for the section for Matteo Gratarola. Mark on the board, he's still only on four. Still two more to play with. If you score more than three marks in a section, of course, it is a fiasco, a failure, which is worth five. 
If he scores five here, he'll drop behind Busto and onto eight. Riders must drop down onto this block below that cylinder and just behind it. All of them so far have done this in exactly the same way. You're not going to try and risk going front forward because gravity and momentum will carry you forward out of the section more than likely. So you bridge, and then you drop the back wheel down. Sounds easy from the commentary position. Not easy out there, I can tell you that. Jorge Casales failed this section. Toby Martin failed this section. Matteo Gratarola will not fail this section. Gratarola is thrown in section. Number six punches the air with delight. Oh, what a brilliant lap that was from Matteo Gratarola. Just four marks from six. He beats Jaime Busto by three. And Matteo Gratarola is the latest rider to put his place in the heat stages of Extra Landora La Vega. Gratarola threw on four. Busto threw on seven. Mikel Gelamere threw on ten. Marsegui, Martin and Casales in the drop zone. Beautiful performance back from Gratarola. Nervous start on his return to the x -Trial World Championship. His first x since December 2017. And he took two marks in section one. One for footing, one for leaning. Well, the lean was first. The foot was to drag himself to the end of the section. Got his knife back on track with cleans in section two and three. And he couldn't have been happier at the end of that performance because what a ride it was through section five. So much for that being impossible. The five riders before him had got nowhere near to getting through the section. But Matteo Grasserola flew up as though he's been an extra regular throughout his career. And then a single drop mark in section six. Nervous start to the section, but from there he rode it beautifully. Grasserola through to round two. Brilliant effort from the Italian. So unless Fajardo, Raga and Bo will score more than 20 marks, Casales will be out. Gabriel Marseille waiting for an error. And Fajardo, or less likely, Adam Raga and Tony Bo. He is eliminated. In the drop zone, as we've said, on 11 marks, he'll rue that drop mark in section three. Six sections for Gironi Fajardo then. On the occasion of his 100th X-Trial appearance, the Sherco man. Very disappointing summer it's been for him. His worst since 2005, he was down in eighth in trial GP. Keen for a strong X-Trial season to put that behind him. Single drop mark then for Gironi Fajardo for leaning. Some balancing on that first step. First crest for Gironi Fajardo and first drop mark. Gratarola, Busto and Casales, all drop marks in this section. It will just be the single dab though for Fajardo. And if he wants to pick Gratarola, he's only got two marks to play with now. What a sensational performance that was from Matteo Gratarola. What can Gironi Fajardo do for the remainder of this lap? Section two now. Five consecutive riders have cleaned this. Gironi Fajardo very close to dropping a mark for leading. Just about gets away with it. One from two. Oh, oh, actually finished the night third here in extra land oh, in 2019. He's later disqualified, so uh, he keeps the appearance but doesn't have a podium on his statistical account. With the section tonight. Single drop mark given for that first step in section three. So it's one mark from the first two, another for section three, the rest of the section done well, so he's on two and three. Now it's all about what he can do in these two big hitters, section four and five, that have taken the majority of marks in what has generally been a low scoring X trial. Say that to Jorge Casales, but uh, Mateo Gratarola just four, Jaime Busto seven. The riders on the bubble. Gelabert through on 10. Marseille at the moment in the drop zone on 11. It's really tight in the mid pack, as we expected it to be this season. Big names throughout the order. Riders, vast majority of whom have podiums to their name in the extra world championship. Tony Gratarola and Martin, who don't. Jeroni Fajardo in total has 28 podiums in the extra world championship. Big step for section four. Fajardo to his arc, little wiggle to bring the bike back straight to then teeter down the other side. The main step of section four completed with a single drop mark, get through to the end of this. And Gironi Fajardo is one section away from earning qualification himself for round number two. 
section five next up. There's no room for error now for Fajardo. If he fails the next two, it'll be 13 marks, and he will be the next rider to slip into the drop zone. Seven marks to play with for Fajardo. And we know that all but one of the riders have been taken for five in this section five. Only for her. Can he pull off the miracle that Matteo Grattarola managed before him? Three minutes to go. Fajardo can take his time, and he is taking his time in the penultimate section. Down goes Gironi Fajardo, and he's out of the section for a five. For a moment, I thought he might be able to catch the bike and bring himself up for another go. But instead, he will move on to section six. So he had his first opportunity to book his place in round two in section five. He's got his second opportunity here in section six. Eight marks his score. 11 the target. Two to play with now for Gironi Fardo if he wants to guarantee his place in round number two ahead of Gabriel Marseille. Clean so far on the first step. Caught out a couple of riders, including Matteo Grattarola yeah. for a mark. Fajardo is up. Main step still to come. Ford to take his time. Jeroni Fajardo, veteran stage of his career, 36 year old. Second oldest behind Adam Ragger, a real veteran these days of the X Trial World Championship. David Danis urging calm as Jeroni Fajardo is clean in section six. Becomes the latest rider to book his place in round number two. He does so in third position provisionally. Behind Jaime Busto, who finished on seven, and Matteo Grazzarolo, who has finished on a spectacular four. Two riders still to go. They are the two all-time greats of the Extra World Championship. The sport's all-time record highest point scorer and podium earner, Alan Ragger, versus the 14 times world champion, Tony Bowe. We will see them matched up again later on in tonight's grand final. The neutrals will certainly hope that we do. This is Jeroni Fajardo's performance. Single drop mark in section four. That's what paved the way for him to do the job. Section six looks the easier for the second half of this lap. Only two riders have failed. Toby Martin and Jorge Casales. Casales, regardless of what happens here, will be eliminated tonight. And more than likely, we're now looking at Gabriel Marsegui and Toby Martin eliminated as well. Adam Ragger and Tony Bowe can score 10 marks or fewer. No room for error this season. Two rounds in the World Championship. And it's clear that for both Adam Ragger and Tony Bowe, the first target is to get through to tonight's grand final. The points are weighted equally in Andorra La Vella and Barcelona in two weeks' time. But in the case of a tiebreak for riders with an equal number of victories and second places, the tiebreak would be the final round extra Barcelona. So that is going to be a massive night, but both need to set themselves up for it. Adam Raga, round number one. If you find yourself out of position in the opening round, you could face your main rival in the heats. That is the worst possible scenario for the likes of Adam Ragger. Slightly rushed towards the end of section one there. Looked as though Ragger was scrabbling out of it, but he's done so clean. Strong start to the lap for Adam Ragger. Four marks the target total if he wants to try and win this lap, which of course is going to be the aim. He won't want to end up further down the order and risk meeting Tony Bow in the heat stages. Adam Ragger then. He's up. Elegant technical expertise of Adam Ragger in section two. Clean from two. Gilabert and Marseille were before him. Those are the two riders on either side. Gilabert on 10, Marseille on 11. Ragger receiving instructions from Mark Riva, who's his minder here tonight. Section three. So far, so good for Adam Ragger. Aiming to become the second rider to reach the halfway mark in uh, this lap. Still clean. As I said previously, X Trials record all time highest point scorer, past the 1,500 point mark last season. He's 38 times an X Trial winner. Only three of those victories, though, in the last five seasons since moving to TRS. Those familiar yellow colours. 
Drago's clean in section three. Ten marks still to play with. Three sections still to go. Two failures, and Ragger is eliminated, unless Tony Poe has a disaster. So at, at this stage of the competition, okay, Ragger so is only so two so failures yeah. away, and potentially so seeing his extra so world so championship so challenge so brought so to an end. Ragger then needing to do the job. This is the first part of the job. Main step of section four. Nobody's been through this one clean. We've had three riders get through it with a single dab. Gratarola, Busto and Fajardo. And a Raga 2 will take a mark for leaning. We'll then drop down the other side. One mark, nine still to play with. And a Raga is successfully out of section four. First drop mark of the lap for him. As I said, nine still to play with. 10 is the maximum that Adam Ragger can score and be assured of his place in the heat stages. Section 5, only one rider has made it through this one. It was Matteo Gratarola. Ragger wants to secure qualification before Section 6, then it's here that he needs to do it. Won't want it to go down to the final section. Single Martin. All about this big step late on. Failed by six riders so far, cleaned by one Matteo Gratarola. If Adam Ragger gets through this section, he will be guaranteed his place in round number two. If it's a failure, it leaves his progression in doubt. Section five for Adam Ragger. And he's down. Adam Ragger is down for a five-mark score. Still only Matteo Gratarola has been able to find his way through that section. And in the process, Ragger drops behind the Italian in the standings to third position provisionally. And this is where we talk about this shortened extra world championship calendar putting the riders under intense pressure. If Adam Ragger fails this section, he could find himself out of extra Landora La Bella and his 2021 world title hopes all but over already. You wouldn't bet on that happening, it must be said. Ragger is a calm and capable performer and a rider of such experience. We know he understands how to withstand pressure. Single drop mark for leaning there on the first crest of section six. He's now on seven. Ten is the maximum he can score. Three more to play with. Well, of course, as long as he doesn't fail this section, he will be through. If he does fail it, he's staring elimination in the face. Failure here would move him on to 11. He'd drop behind Marseille in the standings. One final step for Adam Raga, who puts his place in round number two. Two errant dabs in section four and six. A five mark score in section five. He finishes the lap on seven. He drops behind Jaime Busto on count back. Seven marks of mixed for the turn. Gratarola four, Busto seven, Raga seven after that performance. Fajardo slots in in fourth position. It's still Marseille, Martin and Casales in the drop zone. With Tony Bo to come. And you have to predict at this stage that Marseille, Martin and Casales are going home. But we saw that Adam Raga was only one section away from potentially dropping out tonight. Single drop mark in section four, single drop mark in section six later on as well. The failure here in section five is what left Ragger's place in round two in doubt. But he steadies the shift. The fine ride in section six later on. He receives the adulation of the crowd. We haven't even started yet. If Tony Bowe moves above Adam Ragger here, into top spot, he will meet Ragger in the heat stages. If Tony Bo wins round one, by my reckoning, he will be the first seed, Ragger would be the fourth seed, and they'd meet in heat two. My goodness me, this extra world championship is hotting up nice and early. Round one, Tony Bo. This is gonna be massive. Every section, every round, throughout this shortened 2021 season. Tony Bow, back wheel style. He's busy. All the others struggling with him. Clean for Tony Bow in section one.
10 marks the qualification cutoff. Both scores 10, he's safe. If he scores more than 10, he will be eliminated. Straightforward as that at this stage. Only winner to date at Extra Andorra La Vella, Tony Bo. Only dropped two marks all night here in 2019. It was one of those consummate performances and really an end of season party for him as well. He'd already wrapped up the World Championship title. Different story tonight, intense pressure. That one is a home round for Tony Bo. He is a resident here in Andorra. As he showed us, of course, in uh, social media visits to his house during the pandemic. Keeping us all entertained. Clean so far for Tony Bo. But it's the second half of this lap that has proved more perilous for the riders thus far. Clean under three sections. So does Adam Raga, so does Mikel Jalabert. He's home as for round number two. Tony Bow then for section four. Nobody's been clean through this one so far tonight. Can Bow maintain his clean record? No, he can't, but it's a single drop mark so far. Bo drops his first mark of round number one. Then his first mark of the night leads through section four. Unless he fails the remaining two sections, Tony Bo will be safely through to round number two. Now, is there any strategy to be played here for Bo? Does he want to manipulate things here to avoid meeting Adam Ragger in the heat stages, which is probably the biggest risk to a world championship, frankly, for Bo. Repsol Honda have discussed the current situation, the current state of play as far as who could meet who in the heat stages. Tony Bo, section five. Only one rider has made it through this section. That was Matteo Grattarone, and I was practically rubbing my eyes afterwards. Fine performance from the Italian. What's Bo got to offer? Turn on the back wheel, it's going to be a big leap. It's not good enough. And Matteo Grattarola is the only rider to make it through section five in round one. What a brilliant performance that was from Grattarola. Even the great Tony Bow couldn't make it through there. Everyone will be scrabbling around to watch the replay of Grattarola before we get to the ground final, I can tell you that. Section six. If Tony Bow fails this section, he will be eliminated from round one. Now in seventh position. Not something that we've uh, seen very often from Tony Bow. Currently on a winning streak of nine consecutive X trials. His last defeat, Barcelona 2019. It's a win rate of 73%. 92 appearances. My goodness me, that's nerves. Drop mark for Tony Bow. Frightening moment before the final step. He's going to get out of it. Tony Bow books his place in the heat stages. Matteo Grattarola will be your top seed. Adam Ragger moves above Tony Bow in the classifications for round number one, and they avoid meeting one another in round two. Bow will move into heat two against Matteo Grattarola and Jeroni Fajardo. Meanwhile, Heat 1 will feature Jaime Busto as top seed with Adam Raga and Mikel Jalabert. And I start to wonder whether Tony Bowe's drop mark there late on was to avoid meeting Adam Raga in the heat stages or whether it was simply a mistake. I tell you what, if it was simulated, it was simulated to uh, a Shakespearean level of performance because uh, it looked like a nervous moment to me for Tony Bow. There was a, a moment there where I thought he was going to fall from the section. Look at that. That's how close Tony Bow came to seeing his world championship shredded his hopes on the opening night of the campaign. If he'd fallen out of that section there, it would have been a five-mark score. It would have been 11 marks. Gabriel Marseille would have beaten him. Tony Bow saves his blush. We've got a three-way tie on seven. First rider to take to the sections out of those three was Jaime Busto. He's second seed. Adam Raga was next. He's third seed. Tony Bow, last rider, advantageous starting position. He qualifies fourth. And Raga finishing third and fourth in round number one. Avoid meeting one another in the heat stages. Matteo Grattarola wins round number one after becoming the only rider successfully through section five. What an astonishing performance from Matteo Grattarola. But look at that for a standing. Six riders separated by just six marks in round number one. More great extra action still to come from Andorra La Vella. Cancellation.
questions and delays as a result of the global pandemic, but finally, we are back on track. You join us and over one and a half thousand spectators from the Polysportio d'Andorra for round one of just two in the shortest and most long-awaited season of all time. Two extra trials in three weeks to settle the 2021 title. The knockout format will decide tonight's winner of Extra Andorra La Vella. The preliminary phase of competition already complete. And if you are just joining us, who did you bet on for round one? I bet it wasn't. Matteo Gratterola. Yes, the Italian making his return to the Extra World Championship. And for the first time since December 2017, comes up trumps in the opening phase. The only rider able to get through section five successfully. And as a result, he takes top spot. Six marks separating six qualifiers. We were only one mark away from seeing Alan Ragger and Tony Bow meeting in heat number two. As it is, they won't meet in the heat stages, but the lineups are attractive nonetheless. Eliminated in that preliminary phase, Toby Martin, valiant effort from him with eighth position. Jorge Casales, a disaster for him, at stuck down at the back in ninth. And Gabriel Marseille, the closest of the three eliminated riders to making it through, eliminated by just a single mark. Coming up next, the heat stages of competition. Six riders divided into two groups. The winner of each moves through to the grand final, second in each to the consolation final to battle for a place on the podium. The third place rider in each heat is eliminated. And two big lineups as well we've got to come. Adam Ragger will take on Jaime Busto in heat number one. So two of the real big names and a big risk in the context of this world championship because there is so little room for error for these riders over just two rounds in 2021. Tony Bow has the clearer run as far as the heat stages are concerned, but uh, Matteo Grattarola, the class of round number one, and Bow will feature up against him. Mikel Jalabert, Adam Ragger, and Prime Busto, the lineup for Heat 1. Jerome Fajardo, Tony Bow, and Matteo Grattarola, the lineup for Heat 2. Before we get underway with the opening heat of round two, an overview of the event for those of you less familiar with extra. Each rider taking on the course laid out around the arena floor tonight, targeting the lowest possible score from FIM observer Jordi Sanchez. Penalty marks recorded for each time a rider touches any part of the bike other than the tyres on the section. That's known as leaning and for using any part of the body on the section or floor that's known as footing. The course broken down into zones known as sections, each of which carrying a maximum score of five marks. And if a rider fails or uh, falls or dismounts, rather, exceeds the boundaries of the section or approves more than three marks for any reason, a five will be registered against their name. Clear enough? In the heat stages, just in the opening round, riders have a total of six minutes to tackle six sections consecutively. Running out of time within a section results in a five mark score there and also in any other incomplete sections. The 180th extra in the sport's history, and as we've said, certainly the most long awaited. It was a brilliant 2020 season that saw seven different riders scoring at least one podium over the uh, five rounds. And in 2021, it's been unpredictable so far here tonight. Top seed Matteo Grattarola goes last in heat number two with the advantageous starting position. The disadvantage here is for Mikel Jalabert, the first rider out in heat number one, the first rider to tackle these sections, and they are the reverse direction of the section from round number one. So, of course, in the opposite direction, they bear little resemblance to what we've seen so far tonight. Jalapé with a tough task ahead of him, could only qualify by a single marks advantage over Gabriel Marseille. Marseille, the youngster, eliminated Mikel Jalapé in what is his first extra appearance with Gas Gas after spells with Sherco and more recently, of course, with uh, Vertigo. Fit in the world in 2018 and 19, Jalapé was inexplicably disappointing last season, finished down in eighth position. He's a top six qualifier. He's into round number two. Can he go to the next stage? Over the consolation final or the grand final? Section one. First rider into these sections now. Breaking new ground, giving us a target total, and it's going to be a five in section one. Tries to leap all the way across from the first module to the third and slides down off the face of the summit of section one and down to the first fiasco of round two. Mikel Jalabé, twice an extra podium finisher. His first, it's only his third appearance. Uh, incredible second place at Tech Extra Strasbourg in 2018. So he took the third in Extra Marseille in 2019. Section two. 
straightforward enough in the other direction in the opening round. Completely different configuration, of course, in round two. Oh, big fall that, and that's a nasty incident for Mikel Jalabert. The bike comes down on him. He looks to be in some discomfort as well. First thought here yeah, is for the safety yes. of Mikel Jalabert. Of course, he's out of the section, section number two, the paramedic straight on hand, which is good to see. Not used to seeing uh, major incidents like that one in the X Trial World Championship. It's one of the highest points of the sections that uh, Jellabella has gone down. And he goes down face first Hello. as well. Open face helmets, of course, so that, that is a real worry. Mikel Jellabella up to his feet, rises to applause from the crowd here at the Polysportio d'Andorra. Nasty way to start the uh, round two phase. Mikel Jalabert taking a, a big, heavy impact there. With the bike coming down on him as well. Anyone who takes part in motorsport is a real warrior. And extra is no exception. The heights, the danger is ever present. It's a hard floor. Jalabert walks away with weight official confirmation. But the way that Mikel Jalabert is limping away, still aided by the paramedic, shakes his head now. It wouldn't surprise me if that is game over for Mikel yes, Jalabert here tonight. As we say, I don't want to preempt anything. Official confirmation uh, we'd still be waiting for, but uh, Jalabert looks in, in real discomfort. See it again. Face first, and then the bike and the insult to injury landing on him. On-track personnel dashing uh, straight over to the scene of that uh, incident. And uh, I can see just in front of our commentary position, uh, Adam Raga has been told to warm himself up and, and limber up. So uh, it looks as though Mikel Jalabert will take the uh, maximum 25 penalty points. And of course, a sixth seed that will leave him in sixth place in this round number two, regardless of what happens for the uh, remaining riders. Uh, unfortunate turn of events. Never nice to see a, a rider going down with that, uh, that kind of force. Mikel Jalabert. Sound of the action here at Extra Land or La Villa. What an awful uh, scene that was to witness. Credit to the medical personnel who were straight on scene and to the track personnel as well. And it does look as though we are now in a position to move straight on with uh, Adam Raga. Hopefully, that turns out just to be precautionary for Mikel Jalabert. He's not too bad at the He's walked away from the scene of that crash. It's a reminder of the constant perils of extra competition. Falling from a big height, face first, bike landing on him. Nasty incident for Mikel Jalabert. So that guarantees that uh, Adam Ragger and Jaime Busto, the next two riders out, will move through to at least the consolation final. But it really is a head-to-head -head between two riders who, on occasion, have been extremely evenly matched. Busto, you always fancy, is the biggest risk to Adam Ragger meeting Tony Bow in a grand final. And the fact that they meet in round number two, with Busto the higher seed, remember, leaves Adam Ragger in an uncomfortable position. Ragger, the oldest rider in the field, 39 years of age, and the most experienced as well of the current crop, passes Dougie Lampkin in the all-time X-Trial appearance records. Tonight, this will be his 136th X-Trial. Adam Racker into section one. Mikel Jalabert failed this exact step previously. Six minutes for six sections for Racker. Big step. And Adam Racker, two is down for a five. So Mikel Jalabert falling there. Section two that uh, may cost him so dearly. Adam Ragger can now move on to tackle that section that hampered Mikel Jalabert to such an extent. Four times world champion, Adam Ragger. X Trials all time highest point scorer past the 1,500 point mark uh, last season, of course. Mark Reader, his minder, waiting at the highest point of this section. Saw so, Mikel Jalabert come down so spectacularly previously in heat number one. Adam Ragger leaped straight up. It was on the descent that uh, Jalabert got himself into problems. Now, how do you tackle a curved surface that's slanting away from you, that encourages you to find the floor? Will it be a leap? Will it be 
is sending sideways on by the looks of it here for Adam Ragger. See if he can drop the bike down and then power through to the uh, exit gate. Ragger's lined himself up for the penultimate module. Oh, bridges very nicely. Then through on the back wheel. It's a clean in section two for Adam Ragger. That's more like it. The extra gets up and running. First successfully completed section of the heat stages. Minder just cleaning the entrance now to section three for Adam Ragger. Sponsors boards moved out of the way so that Ragger can uh, get to where he needs to be on the entrance to that section as well, section three. Four minutes still to go, plenty of time. Adam Ragger up at the start of section number three. There shorter sections tonight, we saw that in round one, but the level of difficulty will gradually increase, and in the final, four of the six sections will be completed in both the round one and round two directions. So this is valuable learning experience as well for the riders who make the final. What a narrow ridge that is that Adam Racker has chosen to ride through, but it allows him to just fire his way straight to the end of section three. That's another clean for Adam Racker. Five marks from three sections, of course, Ragger's head-to-head -head really is with Jaime Busto, and he doesn't know what Busto's going to be able to do because Busto's still to come. If we end up with a tie-break, it will be the rider who performed better in round number one previously. And, of course, that was Busto. So Ragger at real risk in this heat number one. Always the jeopardy of being a, a two-round series. The most that we could have managed, more than we could have expected, frankly, starting in November 2021, when the 2022 season would normally start at this time of year. Section four, a bit of wheel spin there for Ragger as he touches the side of the section for the first time, but he's up and in, and he should be up and out here as well. Toughest step is already done. Just about getting it right now. Precision from Ragger, it's another clean in section four. The more cleans Raga piles on, of course, the more pressure he puts on Jaime Busto. But also the more it suggests that we could be in for a very, very close fought, tight scored heat one. Five marks, four sections for Adam Raga, two still to go. Two minutes still on the clock. Raga is up. At the start of section five. So far, so clean. A little bit of a trick to the turn here. Nice work again from Adam Ragger. The Raiders saw round one as a low scoring extra, round two looking low scoring as well. Will that failure in section one come back to bite Adam Ragger? Is that, too, that uh, step too high for Jaime Busto as well? Could be decisive right at the start of Jaime Busto's run in heat one. Section six now. Again, slightly trickier in the reverse direction to what we saw in round number one. Riders are obliged to drop down onto the two blocks. You can see that from the colored stickers. Ragger is straight down. Now, this is a sizable step. Slightly taller as a step than in the other direction. It's easier in the other direction. Little doubt about that. What can Ragger do here? Final section, currently on five marks. Adam Ragger, he's up. And that was a real force of effort as well from Adam Ragger. Remains clean in section six. If he finishes the mark on five, finishes the lap on five, that is a very strong result, a very strong effort from Adam Ragger. Five marks from six sections. Can Jaime Busto do any better? Busto with five marks to play with, remember. It's the superior result from round number one that will be the tie break in the heat stages if required. Busto was the second seed, Raga was third seed. Heat number one, Adam Raga, five marks. Mikel Jalabert, that's academic really after his incident. We all send our best wishes. Raga watches on and waits now. Just that five mark score for this incident in section one. And from there, that was a superb performance. Five consecutive cleans from Adam Raga. Puts him in the driving seat of this heat one. Over to you now, Jaime Busto. World number three in 2018 and 2019. He was only sixth overall last season. Started the season strongly in La Réunion, had a podium there. 
but uh, largely struggled from there on in. I spoke to him earlier on after the recent news that he signed with Vertigo for 2022 and 2023 as well. The deal uh, announced late September. That's going to bring him up to four years with the manufacturer. Big effort early on in section one for Jaime Busto, but down he comes. So he too has scored five marks from section one. He's got to be clean now from here on in. That's the level of, e of uh, exertion and the level of performance that uh, Adam Raga has put him under. High pressure now for Jaime Busto. Any mistakes from here on in? And it will be Adam Raga who moves through to the grand final. Jaime Busto to the consolation final. If Busto is clean from here on in, he will have done enough. Pressure and the stakes, as I've said, couldn't be much higher. Big opening to section two. Moment there where I wondered whether Busto was going to quite make it up where he wanted it to. But how easy was that in the end from Jaime Busto? Spins to a halt in the middle of the arena floor. Doesn't need to be rushing. And I think that his minder, Alex Salah, will be telling him exactly that. Take it easy. Calm yourself down. Rider whose temperament has often cost him down the years. A consistent performer. Winner of Extra Paris in 2018. What a wonderful night of entertainment that was. Spectacle provided by Tony Bowe riding with a severe back injury at the time as well. Jaime Busto. Oh, it's a single drop mark for Jaime Busto. And that is disastrous. It means that Adam Ragger will move through to tonight's grand final. It means that Jaime Busto will be going to the consolation final regardless of what he does in the remainder of this heat number one. It was a low scoring lap from Adam Ragger. It put Busto under pressure and Busto has only made a small mistake, but it is enough. Raga is top seed from heat number one. And any scare, any fear for Adam Raga is now over. The remaining three sections largely academic as far as Jaime Busto now is concerned. He'll decide the starting order for the consolation final, of course, for Jaime Busto. His uh, results from here on in. Whoever the second place rider is from heat number two will be the rider who meets him. Now moving on to section four. Jaime Busto. Six marks from three. What a shame to drop a mark for leaning at the start. That's another drop mark for leaning. Underlying what a, a great performance that was from Adam Ragger. Busto trying to slide the sump rather than lift the bike and land it again. So that he only takes one mark, effectively error carried forward for the mathematicians among you. Single mark dropped by Jaime Busto then in section four as well. That should be it from this one, it is. Busto now on to seven. Two to go in heat one. Low scoring extra trial. We do tend to see extra Barcelona as a, a more challenging night. But don't forget, the sections only get more difficult for the final because time pressure begins to play a bigger role. Riders, four of those six sections going in both directions of what we've seen thus far. Nice work on the back wheel there from Busto. Big step to open uh, section five to the highest point of section five is already completed. It's the technical challenge with a little twist at the end there. Now done in straightforward fashion by Jaime Busto. Still two marks will be the gap between Raga and Busto. Last the podium finisher, as I said, an extra La Réunion at the start of the 2020 season. Of course, the 2020 campaign started late in 2019. It has been a long wait between extra competitions, 20 months, over 600 days, 640 to be precise, between extrials. Extra Bilbao are last in the early stages of the 2020 calendar year. I'm in Busto now in section number six. Extra La Reunion, his only uh, podium so far on the Vertigo. Only just joined the manufacturing at the start of the 2020 season. Comes into this season with a great deal more experience on the bike. And we're hoping that that stands him in good stead to return to the podium here tonight. It's not going to be in the top two positions for Jaime Busto. That was already settled after section three. Pretty
finishes with his customary celebration at the end of section six. Back-to-back -back cleans, three cleans in total, two dabs in section three and four proving critical after that failure in section one. Five marks for Adam Raga, seven marks for Jaime Busto. Mikel Jalaber, unfortunately, on the injury list. And it is Busto who will go through to the consolation final. It is Raga who will go through to the grand final. Who will join him? We'll find out in a couple of moments' time with heat number two. Adam Raga just thanking the spectators here in the Polisportiu d'Andorra for their warmth and their applause, which has uh, certainly helped us with this spectacle. It's been such a, a long wait between events, of course. We're so glad to be back on track tonight. And when you see the fans around you cheering, they were Mexican waves and, uh, and shouting and cheering during the intermission as well, that kind of energy. It certainly makes you feel that uh, all of this is worthwhile. We're delighted to be back tonight. 640 long days between extras. Results of heat number one then. Adam Raga victorious by a two mark margin over Jaime Busto. Crucial drop marks in sections three and four. It was a lot to ask for Busto to run five consecutive sections clean, and he was unable to do so. Mikel Jalabert, we can only send our best wishes for a speedy recovery after his nasty fall in section two. So we now move on to heat two. Jeroni Fajardo, Tony Bowe and Matteo Gratarola, the three riders for this stage. Gratarola, the top seed from round number one. What an incredible performance that was. Tony Bowe was the fourth seed after dropping a mark in the final section. And Jeroni Fajardo was the fifth seed. Fajardo will be the first rider out in heat number two, but of course he benefits from having seen Jella Bear in the first two sections of heat one, and then uh, Raga and Busto, and particularly Raga, gives a good indication of what needs to be done here for Jeroni Fajardo if he's to have a hope of making the grand final itself. I think five marks is probably what he needs to be aiming for, and if he can get through section one, he really puts himself in with a good shout of making it through. Andorra La Villa. Our 2019 season finale, our 2021 season opener, of course, tonight. Did have the uh, extra prize giving ceremony for the 2020 campaign here in Andorra La Villa as soon as the uh, um, international medical situation permitted with the uh, global pandemic, of course. Mikel Jalabert back to the uh, arena to watch the remainder of the night because he won't take any further part but that uh, earned him a round of applause from the crowd here in Andorra Levy. Jeroni Fajardo. Up he goes. Oh, he was nearly there, you know. Not many have got closer than that through uh, this section one so far. Gelaber, Raga, Busto. And now in heat two, Jeroni Fajardo down for a five. But that was a good effort from Fajardo. He wasn't far away. Big night for Jeroni Fajardo tonight. Makes his... 100th uh, extra appearance. 36 years of age, the veteran. He made his debut all the way back in 2005, finished third overall that year. Third again in 2017. And of course, last season as well. That's uh, not the best of starts to section two for Jeroni Fajardo, but he manages to recover it in the end. And as far as the observer is concerned, still looks clean as well. Got to avoid dropping a mark for leaning, which he does successfully, but then takes one on the descent, where Mikel Jalabert fell, of course. And now it's going to be a bit of a scrappy end to the section with a mark drop for footing, that's two. So Jeroni Fajardo did well at the summit of section two not to take any marks for leaning. But on the descent that caught out Mikel Jalabert, he becomes only the second rider to score. Adam Raga and Jaime Busto in heat one were both clean through there. Fajardo doesn't need to worry about what happened in heat one because it, because it is a direct head-to-head -head at this stage. Fajardo's only up against Bo and Gratarola in pursuit of a place in the grand final. Bo in particular, big name to beat, of course, in heat two. Fajardo is up and he's down. That is very bad news for Jeroni Fajardo. A failure at the start of section three. He was most of the way up. He had the sump resting. He realised he was teetering backwards. I think he even tried to jump to have another go at that uh, leap at the start of section number three, but he couldn't uh, keep it on the island. Both feet off the pegs and down he goes. So it's 12 marks from three sections. This is not going well for Jeroni Fajardo. And it does very much look as though Fajardo 
could well end up finishing fifth here tonight. Ratarola and Bo still to come. Again, a failure right at the start of a section for Jeroni Fajardo. 17 marks out of a possible 20 from four completed sections. Well, four incomplete sections, three of them anyway. Failed by Jeroni Fajardo, only section two he's managed to get through. Applause of sympathy as much as anything at this day from the crowd here in Andorra. Jeroni Fajardo then. Section five. Remains to be seen what Gratarola in particular will do. Can't imagine Tony Pope failing as many as this. Fajardo is up at the start of section five. Still a chance for Fajardo to save his night if he can beat Gratarola or Bo and qualify to the consolation final. It'd be a miracle for him to make it to the grand final itself. Two final steps still to come then. An ultimate section of heat number two for Jeroni Fajardo. And then twist and through he comes on the back wheel. His first clean of the lap. Jeroni Fajardo, who is the fifth seed in round number one. Hoping to make it through at least to the consolation final and contest a place on the podium. Finished third here in 2019, Jeroni Fajardo. Extra Alandora La Bella. First staging. Was later disqualified. Though, so he doesn't have a podium in Andorra on his record. One final section in heat two. To try and give himself the best possible banker score and hope that either Bo or Gratarola drops behind him in this second heat. Jeroni Fajardo, Sherco man, had a very disappointing uh, summer season. Finished Trial GP down in eighth position. His worst result since 2005. It's not going to be as uh, dramatic as that, regardless of what happens here. Fajardo is guaranteed at least fifth position this evening. He'd like to go better than that. Try and uh, keep his place on the extra World Championship podium that he earned in 2020, of course, with third overall. Didn't take part in all of the rounds either in uh, 2020, so it was a decent effort from Fajardo. Been a long time since that season, though, came to its conclusion at extra bill back. 20 months. We've been saying. Big step here for Fajardo, and he's done it without dropping a mark for leaning. That cube really invites that to sump to sit on one of the crests. But Fajardo is through and clean in section six, so a strong end to the lap for Fajardo. 17 marks in total. I don't think from the facial expression that he's too satisfied with that, and I'm not surprised. Braga in heat one scored five, Busto in heat one scored seven. That gave us an indication as to what to expect in heat two. But uh, Jeroni Fajardo, 17. Fair way short of Braga and Poe's efforts from heat one. Doesn't necessarily need to worry. If Poe and Gratarola both score worse than 17, then Jeroni Fajardo will be going through to the final. That does seem unlikely, though. Fajardo failing section one early on. Failing section three as well. And then four went away from him right at the start. I think it was the manner of the fiascos. This one in particular will be galling. Got the sump up couldn't get the body weight forward. And then again, the same situation in the next section four. 17 marks at that stage, cleans the final two, as Raga and Busto did before him. At least gives himself a hope of having a shot at least at the consolation final. And Gratarola, 17 marks or better. What about Tony Bo? Doesn't know what Matteo Gratarola is going to do yet. Tony Bo, it's not just about getting onto the podium. Crucial thing for Tony Bo to make the grand final tonight. 14 times a reigning world champion has never faced a task like this. The shortest ever extra world championship season. Bo, a full man here in Andorra La Bella, and our only previous winner in this arena. What a step that is from Tony Bo. The section failed by the four riders before him, and Tony Bo blasts his way to a clean in section one. Even Jeroni Fajardo there on the infield is giving Tony Bo a round of applause for that. That is brilliant. Didn't necessarily see that coming as early as section one. Man under pressure, Tony Bo. Little doubt about that. No room for error. The likes of Bo. And wow! Tony Bo show is back, ladies and gentlemen. We've waited a long, long time to see this. Flies through the section. Remember how Mikel Jalabert struggled and fell, how Jeroni Fajardo took a couple of marks, had to drag his way to the end of the section. Tony Bo looked like Superman at the end there. Two cleans out of two. 
Well, if Tony Bow and Matteo Grattarola oh. both finish clean, Grattarola will go through thanks to his seating position yeah. for round one. Long way to go before we get to that kind of stage just yet. Tony Bow doesn't bother with the crest that we saw Adam Raga use previously. Slightly different line there from Bow, but again, it's a clean three in a row. Well, we've seen Raga through clean in sections four, five, and six. Could Tony Bow do the same? Really was incredible on the last visit to extra Andorra La Vella. Got only two marks all night here in 2019. Big end of season party it was for him as well after his set 14th world crown was already sealed. Different story tonight, as we've been saying. High pressure situation for him. No room for error. If he fails to make the final tonight, then even victory in extra Barcelona. Final round in two weeks' time might not be enough. But he's doing everything he can in round two to guarantee his progression to the final. Tony Bowe, top final step, straightforward fashion. Section four also completed clean. Four sections, no marks. Brilliant, this from Tony Bowe. Unbeaten in 2020. Had five wins out of five before the season was curtailed. There were only two rounds left to play in 2020 before the pandemic hit. Uh, extra Vienna Neustadt and Extra Andorra Levia, if I remember correctly. And Bo was within touching distance of the crown anyway, but uh, sealed the deal. 25 points, I think, the uh, victory margin. Certainly the favourite again to claim honours in 2021, representing Repsol Honda. Straightforward in section five. Well, this is what Adam Racker is up against. If he wants to become world champion in 2021. Little doubt that it's the best chance Rag has had for a fair while. He's got to try and unseat Bo over two nights instead of trying to beat him for consistency. Bo's already up in section six. Onto the first step. Can he go clean in round number two? If he does, any drop marks for Grattarola and he will not make the final. Grattarola could be left needing a clean lap himself to move through at Bo's expense, and that's going to be a tall order. Grattarola, whilst excellent in round one, still dropped a few. Four marks. First time around in the other direction, of course, for Mateo Grattarola. Bo bridges to the next block, which is his last major challenge of heat two. He's sent the other side and then up the cylinder. You can already see the tyre tracks. The rubber laid by the riders so far through this section. Up he goes. And he is still clean. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 14 times extra world champion Tony Bo is clean in heat two. Beat that, Mr. Grattarola. Matteo Grattarola must now be clean himself if he wants to move through to the final. Just the first two steps of section one could see Grattarola score more than that. Bo's party's already begun. The crowd. Rising for a Mexican wave to greet their man practically spontaneously after that performance. Bo Clean, Fajardo 17. Remember, there's still an extra to race for tonight. Well, I said it was a party atmosphere here in 2019. Party atmosphere already in 2021. It's the first round of the season. Stunning performance. What highlight do you pick from Tony Bo's performance there? First rider through section one, and here it is, clean. Absolutely brilliant. Consummate performance from Tony Bo again. Well, Tony Bo just saying over the loudspeaker, he knew that a clean would be the best way to give himself the best possible chance of making it to the final, and that's what he's done. Absolutely. And with a minute to spare. No, Matteo Grattarola quite rightly doesn't want to comment at this stage. Just six cleans, Matteo, and you're through to the final. Daunting prospect here for Matteo Grattarola of going up against the world's best in Tony Bowe. Grattarola, who hasn't been a regular X-Trial rider since the 2013 season and qualification to the X-Trial World Championship after what's been the summer of his life, that's for sure. Looking to better his previous best X-Trial result at the fifth position at X-Trial Nice in 2013. He's got to be clean if he wants to beat Tony Bow. Section one. He's also got an eye on Jeroni Fajardo, no doubt, on 17 marks. As soon as he drops one, if he drops one, that's what his focus will be on, getting through to the consolation final, top four. 
got to do this clean if he wants to beat Bo. Up he goes. It's going to be a five-mark score. Tony Bo is through to tonight's grand final. Matteo Grattarola will now fight Gironi Fajardo effectively for a place in the consolation final and a shot at his first ever podium. If he does make it through to the consolation final, it will be his best ever extra performance. Matteo Grattarola. His first extra appearance since December 2017. His first full season in eight years, as I've said. Section two. Gironi Fajardo took two marks in this one. That's going to be the focus from here on in for Grattarola. Bettering what Fajardo was able to do. Getting off to a strong start to this lap in the key. Fajardo had already notched 17 marks by the end of section four. And that is what he remained on. Grattarola has 12 to play with. Has the superior seating position as well in the case of a tie break. Down. Oh, he's managed to save it with the right foot. Goodness me. These are the kind of stretches you'd normally do in a warm-up. He's trying to force the bike forward. Urged on by the crowd. Oh, what a save! What a save from Matteo Grattarola. Oh, that's brilliant. Wait and see how that scored. Three marks. So it was one for leaning, one for footing, and then one for whatever that last thing was to get him across to the end of the section. Matteo Grattarola was looking down and out in section two and somehow has managed to bridge the section by the span of his legs and make his way out of section two. That was incredible. Section three, big step there for him. Gironi Fajardo failed at the start of section three. Grattarola's on one mark more than Fajardo was at the same stage, so it's important that he makes up some ground here. And he's done so. Matteo Grattarola, fine performance in section three. Eight marks now from three sections. Nine marks still to play with against Gironi Fajardo. Fajardo dropped five in this section four, and from there he was clean. Grattarola, I'm sure, would like to have it done before the final section, just to reduce that pressure somewhat. Only his second appearance under the current extra format of six consecutive sections in six minutes. It's a lot more required of the rider physically than it was in the past, when they could watch the others doing each section before they embarked on the next. Elite sporting competition, putting the riders under a great deal of pressure. Matteo Grattarola then. So far, so good. He's passed the entrance to section four. And Matteo Grattarola completes section four successfully clean. Two cleans in a row. Fajardo is on 17 marks at this stage. Grattarola is on just eight. Two sections to go. And as long as he completes one of these, Matteo Grattarola will be through to the final. Will it be section five? Oh, it's a tough start to it for Grattarola, but eventually he gets up. He's going to give himself the best possible contact patch at the top of the section before dropping down. Just making sure at this stage, Matteo Grattarola, a twist and an exit. Matteo Grattarola becomes the second rider to book his place in the consolation final tonight. Gironi Fajardo is eliminated, it's fifth position for him, it's sixth position for Mikel Jalabert, and Matteo Grattarola guarantees himself his best ever extra finish. One section to go. This is just for pride. Look after yourself here, Matteo. You've got a consolation final to think about. And I say it's just for pride because Jaime Busto completed heat one with just seven marks. Matteo Grattarola is already on eight, so he cannot be top seed. He will be the first rider out in the consolation final. That's just one section, remember. If there is a, a tie, there'll be another second section tie break. Matteo Grattarola, section six. Last four riders through this one have been clean. Well, the only four riders through it, of course. Jalabert didn't get a go. And Grattarola finished within one mark of Busto. Set up quite nicely for two really entertaining finals at the end of tonight. It's been outstanding entertainment so far this evening. Up goes Grattarola. He's unbalanced and he comes down. Only his second failure of the lap, but it doesn't affect things. He will qualify to the consolation final. He's gutted with that at the end. That just goes to show you what a high level he's riding at. I don't know whether he knows the qualification situation, I presume not. 
based on the fact that he looked frustrated there. But it will be Matteo Grattarola who goes through to a consolation final. Jeroni Fajardo finishes the night in fifth position. And Tony Bo and Adam Raga will dice it out in the grand final. Tony Bo just explaining he's delighted to have qualified to the grand final, particularly with this being such a tight championship. And of course, he knows that if he finishes second here, but wins in the season finale, that will be enough to be world champion. So making it through to the final was the first target for Tony Bo. Of course, the reverse is true. He wins here tonight. And the rider who finishes victor then goes on to second place in uh, extra Barcelona. That will not be enough for them. Bo wins this evening and finishes second to the rider who finishes second behind him here. It will be Barcelona that takes the heavier weight. Confirmation of the result of heat number two. Tony Bo clean, astonishing performance. Matteo Grattarola, up until the final section, that had been a great effort from him. Cleans in section three and four compared to five mark scores in both for Jeroni Fajardo. See Grattarola through. So Matteo Grattarola goes to a consolation final where he meets Jaime Busto. Busto will be the top seed for that one. Adam Raga goes through to the grand final. He'll be first out through the sections. Tony Bo will have the advantageous second starting position. So it's on now to the consolation final. And as I've said, this will be between Jaime Busto and Matteo Grattarola. And it'll be Grattarola first out. So we're getting a short break here for Matteo Grattarola. It's just been uh, announced. Which is understandable because Grattarola was the last rider out in Heat 2 and he's going to be the first rider out now in the consolation final. Briefest of breaks though because Grattarola is already limbering up. What a night it's been for him so far. 33 year old. Just 10 extra appearances coming into tonight. Generally focused on his outdoor career. Appeared a little bit nervous when I spoke to him earlier on today, but uh, he's a new man since joining the Better Factory outfit. This season becoming the manufacturer's number one rider. Well, he's had three top six finishes in those 10 X trials. Fifth place his previous best. He will at very least better that to fourth tonight. And he has an opportunity for a first ever X trial podium. Had his first trial GP podium in the summer. Managed three of them, actually. Super summer season. Consolation final, then. The section here is a repeat of section two from rounds one and two. So it's both directions. So the toughest we've seen so far. Section two that saw Matteo Grattarola drop three marks in uh, heat two. In the other direction, of course. That one direction was straightforward, and so it is again for Matteo Grattarola. He's got one minute, he's got bags of time. Grattarola here looking good. Up he goes. Now it's all about the exit that was clumsy last time. This time it's a leap. What a ride that is from Matteo Grattarola and 16 seconds to spare. He is clean in the consolation final. Over to you, Jaime Busto. 23-year-old from the Basque Country. Seven podiums to his name. Extra La Réunion, his last and his only as a uh, vertigo rider. Can he add to that here? If he drops any marks, of course, it's game over. And it will be Grattarola who qualifies at his expense. One minute for Jaime Busto, section one. Big weight at the start there for Jaime Busto, collecting himself. He can't afford to drop any marks. 
If we get a tie, we're going to a tie-break section halfway through. Busto then looking for a clean. Will he go for the big leap that Gratarola managed there at the end? That was athletic. As athletic as his reaching abilities were on the descent previously, Busto has done it as well. Clean the pair of them in the consolation final, and we have a tie. The tie-break section then is called up. And this is a repeat of section one from rounds one and two. Both Tony Poe and Adam Ragger were ready at the start of the first grand final section and they're both having to move out of the way now. Teo Gratarola and Jaime Busto deep in conversation. I'd love to know what the discussion is there. So we're going to a tie-break section. Mateo Gratarola will be next up. As I said, section one from round one and two. Now, this was failed in the round two direction by both Busto and Gratarola. In fact, Tony Bow was the only rider to make it through. And if we do end up with both riders failing, then we're going to go back to the, uh, the previous round. If, the, if both riders finish with the same score in this section, i.e. one, two or three marks, or, or a clean indeed, it will be on time. So there's also a time element to this tie break. One minute then, maximum pressure. Matteo Gratarola, excellent in the consolation final section one. It's now the tie break section. He's to avoid dropping marks in the round one direction. He dropped two marks uh, first time out through section one in round one, whereas Jaime Busto was clean. So Gratarola already up against it. Busto watching on. Gratarola has completed the first direction successfully. Well, he's been about big leaps tonight, hasn't he, Matteo Gratarola? This is a tough one. Every rider failed in this direction in round number two, but Tony Bow, Matteo Gratarola. Big leap, and he's down. It's a five-mark score for Matteo Gratarola. And I'm afraid that that will be enough for Jaime Busto, because if Busto fails as well, then we will have a tie between the two of them after the consolation final section, and Busto will win it as the superior seed. So this is academic now. Five-mark score for Matteo Gratarola. Jaime Busto then. Let's see if he can get through it. We'll wait for official confirmation, of course, of the results. Without preempting anything too much. Sections do need to be completed as per the regulations. Busto is up. See if he can manage this step then. It's beaten everyone. It's beaten Matteo Gratarola twice. The only person it hasn't beaten is Tony Bo. Can Jaime Busto join him? Up goes Jaime Busto. Big step for him here. 23 seconds still to go. Up he goes. Oh, he's done it. Jaime Busto, in sensational style, claims third position at Extra Landora La Villa for 2021. Well, he didn't need to do it in that fashion, but he did. He's a man of style, there's little doubt about that. Gratarola can be satisfied, his best ever Extra performance, but it will be Jaime Busto who takes third in Extra Landora La Villa tonight. Now turn his attention to the Spanish Championship next weekend. He is the Spanish Championship leader. Late finish to the Summer Championship. Well, the weather holds on better in, uh, in Spain, doesn't it? Jaime Busto was just asked about that jump that he managed in the tie-break section of the uh, consolation final, and he said he couldn't manage it first time, so he just gave it everything. Sounds easy when you explain it like that, Jaime. Clean in section one for both Matteo Gratarola and then Jaime Busto. Gratarola did everything he could tonight. Brilliant performance in round one to top the seeds.
Matteo Grattarola, first extra back, just saying that uh, he hopes it'll be even better next time around. He said that to me earlier on today, that he was expecting tonight to be tough, based on the fact that he doesn't have a lot of experience in the format. It's only his second run, actually, in the uh, current competition format. Rode back in the 2018 season opener, failed to qualify as an event rider for subsequent rounds and hasn't been back until tonight. What a performance he puts in. Unfortunately for him, he fails the tie-break section in the consolation final, and that settles third place in favour of Jaime Busto. Busto then, for the record, comes up clean in the same. Brilliant performance. So, all of the positions are settled, but two remain. Adam Raga versus Tony Bow for top spot at Extra Landora La Vella. It's worth 20 championship points to the winner, of course, this. Tony Bow, the 14 times world champion. Adam Raga, four times world champion. And the level of difficulty is raised even further now. Round five. Section number one, then, first up. Now, this one was section six in round one and round two. So both directions will be, uh, will be tackled here. And for those of you who are keeping score, Adam Ragger and Tony Bow both scored a single mark on section six in round one. It was a, a nervous finish for Tony Bow as well. And in the round two direction, both riders were clean. So well balanced this section on the evidence of what we've seen so far. Adam Raga will be the first rider out through them. Round two direction will be first, and then it will be the round one direction that saw both riders score. Six sections, but this time it will be a head-to-head. -head. One section at a time, one minute per section, and two directions for the riders to tackle. Adam Racker first up then, as I said previously, four times a world champion. What an incredible level of consistency he's had at the top of this sport. He's been in the top three in the world every year from 2002 onwards. Very much in the veteran stages of his career, but even so, six consecutive silver medals. He was second in every 2020 round. Can he go one better tonight and claim the season opener? 38 times an extra winner in total. And three of those victories have been in the last five seasons since his move to Tiaris. First step, section number one of six in this grand final. Keep errors to an absolute minimum. That's the key whenever you're going to face Tony Bow. Hope that Bo makes errors for the sober. No doubting Adam Raga's technical ability. Up he goes. That's not a good start. It's one mark. And he's caught by his minder. They left it as long as possible. But Adam Raga on a section, he's made it through successfully in the previous round. Scores a five in the grand final. And that really leaves the door open to Tony Bow to take a major advantage right at the very start. Raga will be furious with himself. Hard enough to beat Tony Bow at the best of times, but when you give yourself a five mark handicap, it's only going to get tougher. Tony Bow then, he's made it through in both directions successfully earlier on in the night. He's only dropped one mark on this section all evening. And if he drops one mark here, he will be four ahead of Raga. Practically a whole section. And if he cleans it, it will be a whole section in command. One minute to get through in both directions. Time has not generally been an issue so far tonight, but we've only been doing half sections effectively compared to the grand final. Section one, Tony Bow, one minute on the clock. He's got to drop down. That's required. The stickers on the uh, on the section confirm that to the rider. This is the step that cost Adam Raga so deep. How about Tony Bow? He's up and he's still clean. First direction completed successfully. Still 36 seconds on the clock as well. 
Second direction now for Tony Bowe as he bids to take a five mark lead as early as section one. Adam Ragger certainly trying to keep the pressure on, but that was a mistake. Tony Bowe's dropped a mark there. A rare dab tonight, but he was clean in round two. But it will just be one, so it's a four mark lead for Tony Bowe. One section completed, still five to go, a long way to go. Has tended to be in the past that the longer sections, those completed in two directions, have favoured Bo more than Raga, who's struggled to a greater extent with time. Bo is a rider of great alacrity. Adam Raga then next up, section two. One minute restored on the clock. Raga is a previous extra winner in Andorra. But at that stage, the extra was staged uh, at a different venue, just 12 or so kilometres north of here. All the way back in 2003, the uh, previous visit to Andorra before extra Andorra La Vella was established in 2019. Second edition in this city. Section two. Four marks down on Tony Lowe. Takes the leaping effort that Jaime Busto managed before. And Adam Ragger is the third rider through in that section tonight. Clean in section two to apply the pressure back on to Tony Bowe. This was section one, remember, in round two. But uh, Raga failed on that occasion. Tony Bowe went on to clean, and then it was used as the tie-break section in the consolation fight. We saw Busto clean to such spectacular effect. Outstanding is it will be the uh, tie-break section if we need it for the grand final as well. Could be an important one. Yet. Four marks the lead, but Raga has a ride completed in hand. So any marks that Tony Bow drops here will be lost ground compared to his four mark advantage after section one. Looks as though Tony Bow is just querying the state of the floor at the entrance to the section, hence the delay but his protests come to nothing. Minder watching on. Familiar face, of course, in the extra uh, World Championship paddock. Tony Bow with uh, Carlos Beneda now, the uh, former Minder to Takisa Fujinami, who retired at the end of this summer. First step completed successfully for Tony Bow. This is the big one. He cleaned it in heat two, in round number two. Up he goes. And it will be a clean for Tony Bowe. His four mark lead is maintained. Section three next up. This is another single direction section. It was uh, section two in round two. And it was one that both Raga and Bo cleaned on that occasion. We're continuing on the discussion here with uh, Josep Punti on the arena floor. Looks as though there's something that uh, Bo wasn't happy about at the start of that section, but it, it didn't affect him to too great an extent, did it? First clean for both Raga and Bo of this grand final there in section two. Moving on now to section three, as I said, used in the last round, cleaned in the last round by both Raga and Bo, but previous form, when you come up to the pressure situation of a grand final, we saw that in section one. First ride out from Adam Raga, section he knew, section he'd completed before, failed. Four marks to make up. Can't afford any further errors here. That was very, very close to being a drop mark for leaning, but Adam Rag has got away with it. Descent now. We saw how perilous this was with Mikel Jalabert biting the ground. Raga Bridges taking the safe approach here, bouncing his way into position and through clean in section three. Two cleans in a row for Adam Raga. Five marks still, he's score. Again, the pressure is on Tony Bow to maintain that four mark lead. Disadvantages and advantages to be first rider out. On sections like tonight, where the riders have all seen them before, that's not such a great an advantage to being second out. Certainly have to ride with greater pressure. Albert Kavastan previously commented that it wasn't necessarily a bad thing to start first in the grand final. Those were the days of four men grand finals as well. Only two men in the head-to-head -head these days. Kavistan here as the Gas Gas team manager, of course. 
Takisa Fujinami also oh, present and watching on in a more relaxed capacity. His former Repsol Honda teammate here, Tony Bo, about to embark on section four marks the gap. Up goes Tony Bo. And it's going to be a clean in section three. Since I've noticed that uh, section one is also still being given as a clean, that leaves Bo with a five mark lead. Three sections to go. Halfway mark then, and Tony Bo is still five marks up. As I said previously, under more pressure than ever in 2021. Extra World Championship title being settled over just two rounds. Mistakes so rare from Tony Bow. Just five defeats in ten extra seasons. He's really 53 extra in that uh, period. And as I said, just five defeats. Looking to avoid adding another tonight, of course. Five marks up, three to go. He was clean throughout in heat number two. Section four. This was section three in both rounds one and two. Adam Bragger was clean on that in both directions. As was Tony Bell. Looking for another clean then Adam Bragger. He may come to rue that uh, failure in section one, particularly in what's generally been a low scoring trial tonight. Adam Bragger, start here of the second direction of section four. Got to think about time, he's got 31 seconds remaining. I think in this fairly short section, that should be enough for him. Taking his time though, he's got to be careful. 21 seconds now on the clock. Carefully balancing himself again on that ridge. Taking the same line he perfected earlier on tonight. The same result, it's a clean in section four. Over to you again, Tony Bow. Failure for Bow, and it'll level things up with two sections remaining. Section four then for Tony Bow. Winning streak of nine consecutive extras. His last defeat, Barcelona 2019. He's won 73% of all his 92 extra-trial appearances. Incredible record that uh, Bo has. Section four, clean for Tony Bo so far. 10 seconds used, plenty of time in the return direction. Step to open this return. Bo leapt last time, if I remember correctly. He will do the same again, preferring to jump that block entirely. Tony Bo is clean in section four. As it stands, we're going down to the final section, aren't we? Raga's got to keep it clean from here on in if he can. Next up, section five. This is a repeat of section four from the two previous rounds, so both directions. Both Raga and Bo were clean in round number two. Both dropped a single mark in round one. Round one direction will be first. Drop marks for leaning the uh, risk here. as though there was a little bit of uh, confusion there about the direction of the section. My understanding was that it was going to start the other side. <laughs> so that has been settled. Adam Ragger is up then, desperate to keep things clean from here on in. Desperate for Tony Bo to score a fiasco in one of the two remaining sections as well, frankly. The only way this extra is going to tighten up. 
First direction completed, still clean. Second direction now to come. Big step here. Wasn't easy earlier on tonight. So Riders getting caught out here, remember, earlier on. Big step for Raga. He's up. It's a single drop mark for Leaning. Is that another mark that Tony Bow can avoid to extend his lead and settle this extra trial with a section to spare? 6 0 then in favour of Tony Bow. Two rides still to come for Bow. But if he is clean here in section five, Tony Bow will win extra trial Andorra La Villa for the second time. He'll have a six mark gap with a section still to come. Tony Bow, who has an incredible story in the extra world championship, suffered a catalogue of injuries in recent seasons, had an awful back injury in February of 2018 that uh, crossed in the end of that extra season. Everyone will remember him valiantly coming back in extra Paris to celebrate the world championship. Knee injury and uh, in July and broken ribs in December of that year as well, a recurrence of the back injury, an arm injury at the start of 2020. He had a broken left fibula back in May of this year as well, and still he's undefeated in either summer or winter seasons from 2007 onwards. Tony Bow, the master of this sport, looking set to take the first victory of the 2021 campaign. Tony Bow, if he is clean here in Section 5, he will wrap up extra Landora La Villa with a section to spare. Six marks is the gap. So far, so good for Bow. Turn now, the main step of this section that caught out Adam Raga for a single dab. Mark for leaning. If Bo avoids that mark for leaning, he'll be on his way towards victory. A single drop mark here and we will go down to the final section of the night. That's what the neutrals are want, it's not what the fans want. Partisan crowd here in the Polisportio d'Andorra, waiting to bring their man home victorious. Up goes Tony Bo, he's done it on the back wheel. One final step, Tony Bo wins Extra Andorra La Villa for 2021. One win down, one still to go. For 2021, Tony Bo with a section to spare. Five cleans in a row, Bo has done it again. Super lap clean in heat number two. Clean in the first five sections of the grand final. Costly error from Adam Raga in section one. And from there, Bo has only needed to manage his advantage. He extends it in the penultimate section. One section still to go. Bo hasn't traditionally celebrated before his last ride, but that is the pressure that these riders are under. This final section then is only for pride. Section six. It was section five in both rounds one and two. Remember, the round one direction and the challenge this posed the riders. Looking forward to seeing this actually, now that the extra is settled. Remember, Matteo Grattarola was the only rider to complete this direction successfully. Tony Bow failed after him. What about Adam Raga then? 6 0 down. Tony Bow had to drop a mark in the grand final. Toughest sections of the night, both directions in four of the six. Three of those four completed with a clean so far by Tony. This is all about Adam Raga, though. Final appearance for him tonight. And down he goes. Well, it's another night in which Adam Raga has made the final. He's only been out of the grand final now three times in 19 trials in the uh, current Extra World Championship format. Still hasn't been off any podium in the Extra World Championship since 2014. That's now 37 consecutive podiums for Adam Raga but he was second in every round of last season. He's second again tonight. 11 marks his final score. Tony Boat still clean. Right. It's all for pride. Matteo Grattarola, the only man to have successfully completed this step. And I think this would be the perfect way to put the finishing touches to yet another outstanding night for Tony Boat. Section six. One minute on the clock two directions to complete. It's the second direction that caught out the riders in round number one, of course. Bo's 68th X-Trial win. 
already confirmed, already guaranteed. And he put a little bit of flair, a little bit of panache to his final ride of the evening. Remember back to uh, Milan in 2014 when there was one section that Bo couldn't crack and he stayed at the end of the night to give it further goes. Really is an incredible sportsman, Tony Bo. Winner tonight. But what can he do about the step that has been failed by every rider other than Matteo Grattarola here this evening? Bo himself failed this section in round number one. What about the grand final? Can he go one step further? He's going to want to protect himself for extra Barcelona in two weeks' time, but he's not the kind of man to think about that. Bo asked for encouragement, asked for applause. He's only got 20 seconds now. He might run out of time in this section, but he's going to give it a go. On the back wheel. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Up goes Tony Bo. He's done it! Tony Bo finishes in style in extra Andorra La Vega and lays down the gauntlet to Adam Raga and the rest of the field at the halfway mark in the 2021 season. He might have been beaten in round number one, but he is clean in round two. He is clean in the grand final. And this is why he's been 14 times world champion. The crowd here at the Polysportiu Dandora rise to greet him. A sensational performance again from Tony Mo. He looked nervous. He looked nervous during round one, but no such problems in the subsequent stages of competition. Tony Bo with a clean second lap, a clean grand final, is the winner of Extra Landora La Vella. No penalties in round two, no penalties in the final. Yeah, I started the first lap. Still nervous after 20 months, I think, without the uh, extra trial. But after in the, the second lap semi-final and the final, arrived my best riding here in Andorra. It's perfect start of the season. Only have two races, but today I have a good work. You say before the, the race, well, I, I need to be in the podium to secure and, and be alive for the, the second race in Barcelona, but you won. Yeah, the most important today is to stay at the final. Uh, for sure, but uh, one here at home is a big motivation for me. Now it's time to, to work uh, uh, for the next race in, in Barcelona. Thanks a lot and congratulations. Thank you. Yes, we look ahead towards the final round of this 2021 season, shortened calendar, of course, because we wouldn't normally be doing a 2021 season in November. We'd normally have wrapped up in April, but because of the pandemic, it's the shortest ever season. But it might be short and sweet as far as Tony Bo is concerned. 11 Mark Victor in the grand final tonight. And the stadium announcer here just repeated the word zero four times. That is the extent of that performance from Tony Bo. Brilliant in heat number two. He said at the time, well, the best way to guarantee my place in the final was to be clean, heat the pressure up on everyone else. And he did exactly that. Tony Bo victorious tonight by an 11 mark margin over Adam Raga. Jaime Busto and Matteo Grattarola, the two riders for the consolation final. Grattarola lost out in the tiebreak section. Busto then taking third. Jeroni Fajardo and Mikel Gelaber. We do send our best wishes again to Gelaber after his nasty incident earlier on this evening. Uh, section two of heat one. Gelaber able to walk away from the scene of that crash though. He finishes in sixth position. Of course, three riders eliminated in round number one were Gabriel Marseille, Toby Martin, and Jorge Casales in that order. Well, only the podium ceremony then remains. Matteo Grattarola narrowly missing out. Top three about to be invited onto the stage. Two rounds only in 2021. Scored the same in the case of a tie break. Barcelona, the final round of the campaign, the grand final, will take precedence. So Tony Bo leads us by five championship points over Adam Raga, by eight over Jaime Busto. Matteo Grattarola, best of the rest behind. Up onto the podium then, Jaime Busto already there. He's now joined by Adam Raga, second position. And Tony Bo. Winner for the second time of Extra Andorra La Villa. And in equally impeccable style. Hardly dropped a mark here in 2019. Said in the interview there at the end of his victory that it was uh, a nervous start to the day. Round one didn't go as he might have hoped for. But uh, sensational uh, effort from him in both round two and in the grand final. 
little bit of a chill perhaps for Tony Bow. Gets the corporate wear on after that stunning display. Prize given then to Jaime Busto, his eighth X-Trial podium in what was his 24th X-Trial appearance here tonight. Still yet to add to that single win dating back to Paris 2018. Second place goes to Adam Raga, as I said. 37 consecutive podiums now for him. 136th X-Trial appearance, passing Dougie Lampkin in the all-time appearance records. And podium number 116. It is an all-time record in the sport as well. But it's all about Tony Bow, who gets this 2021 season off to the best possible start. And not only does he take victory, he does it in dominant fashion, particularly with that excellent display in the final section when the extra was decided. And he still gave it a big show. Win number 68 for his career, 93rd appearance. Tony Bow victorious. <laughs> Celebrations then begin for our podium trio. Third position, Jaime Busto. Second place, Adam Braga. And a masterclass once again from Tony Bow. His second victory at X Trial, Andorra La Vega. The opening round of just two in this 2021 campaign, and it's Tony Bow who scores 20 championship points. He'll lead his main rival, Adam Raga, after defeating him in the head-to-head -head grand final. Jaime Busto, best of the rest, was only a couple of marks from making it through at Raga's expense in heat number one, and he'll be there again to challenge them at Extra Barcelona, the season decider in just a fortnight's time.